he chose us in him before the foundation of the world that we should be holy and without blame even when we were dead in trespasses he made us alive so put on the new man let all bitterness wrath anger clamor and evil speaking be put away from you put on the whole armor of god that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil i am an ambassador in chains that in it i may speak boldly Greetings and thank you so much for tuning in to this telecast of Living Strong. As always, it's our joy, it's our privilege to come your way and to spend this time with you in God's Word and also in prayer. We are studying through the book of uh, Ephesians, and uh, today we pick up in Ephesians, the fourth chapter, starting with verse 17. Just to give us a little background, a reminder of the kind of people Paul is writing to uh, remember that the believers at Ephesus uh, came from a background where they were predominantly worshippers of the goddess Diana. Uh, this was a female goddess uh, whom influenced almost every part of their life, and uh, they were worshippers of this goddess. Many of them were involved in the occult and witchcraft and black magic and sorcery, and so they were not only practicers of a false religion, they were also involved in the occult and all of those kinds of things. And we know that they came out of all of this now to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. And so Paul, having, uh, you know, in the previous chapters, talked to them about their rich inheritance in Christ and the fact that we've all been called into one body and what, what, what Christ is doing in the church now begins to address their personal walk, their everyday life as believers. And so we pick this up in verse 17 as he says, This I say therefore and testify in the Lord, that you should no longer walk as the rest of the Gentiles walk in the futility of their mind, having their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them, because of the blindness of their heart, who being past feeling have given themselves over to lewdness to work all uncleanness with greediness. So he tells, he tells the believers now, okay, God's people, you cannot live the way the out people on the outside live, those who don't know Jesus. He says, you can't live like that. And he says, they are living according to the futility of their mind, the vanity, the vain imaginations of their mind. Whatever the mind decides to do, they go do it. And the, their understanding, their ability to comprehend spiritual things is actually darkened. They are cut off from the life of God. They don't have the zoic life of God. They don't have this eternal life, which you as believers have. Their nature has not been changed, and their inner person has not been imbued with the zoic life of God. They don't have the life of God. And uh, they are ignorant, and their hearts are blinded. So he says, look, that's their spiritual condition, and therefore that's their moral life. But you cannot live that way. And so he challenges them in verse 20 to 24. He says, But you have not so learned Christ. If indeed you've heard him and have been taught by him, as the truth is in Jesus, that you put off concerning your former conduct, the old man which grows corrupt according to deceitful lust, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that you put on the new man, which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. So he says, look, what, what I've brought, the message I've taught to you about Jesus Christ is very different from the way the Gentiles, the unsaved walk. He says, what, what has the Lord Jesus taught us? What is the message, the truth that you've been taught in Jesus? He says, the old man needs to be put away. The old former way of life, living according to the sinful nature, living according to the way the Gentiles live, according to the vanity of their mind, and the fact that they don't have the life of God. That way of life has to be put off or put away. You cannot continue walking that way because that is corrupt, that is deceitful. And instead, he says, you put on the new man, the new man that you have become inside you. 
So as a believer, as a person who's born again, you are a new man. And of course, that new man, that new creation has taken place in your spirit inside you. And he tells us in verse 24 something about the new man. The new man has been created in the very image of God, in the likeness of God. That's who you are on the inside. You are somebody who has been born again, and you are a new man. Your new man is created in God's own image, and it is created for righteousness and true holiness. That means your inner person, your inner man, new man, has the potential and the capacity and the inclination to walk in righteousness and true holiness because it is created in the image of God. So you don't have an old man. You have a new man. And the new man is in the image of God. It, it is created to walk in righteousness and true holiness. So you need to put that on. That means you let the new man come on on the outside of you in your way of life, in your behavior. But how can that happen? Through what he says in verse 23. Be renewed in your mind, in the spirit of your mind, meaning in the very core of your mind, in your thinking, in the way you look at things, in, in, in the way you perceive things. Be renewed in your mind. Be transformed in your mind. And this, of course, reminds us of what Paul write, uh, wrote in Romans 12, verses 1, 2, and 3, when he told the believers there at Rome not to be conformed to this world, but to be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Having a change in your way of life and that's brought about as you renew your mind. You begin to train yourself to think according to the way God wants us to think. Now, what is this new life all about? And he begins to talk about some very specific things. For instance, in verse 25, he says, Therefore, putting away lying, let each one of you speak truth with his neighbor, for we are members of one another. So, stop lying. Get rid of lying. That's no longer part of this new life that we have in Jesus. Verses 26 and 27. Be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your wrath, nor give place to the devil. So he says, look, you're going to feel angry, but do not sin. Don't let your anger lead you to sin. Now, anger is an emotion that all of us as human beings will feel. But he says, when you're angry, don't sin. Don't do something that's displeasing to God. But instead, before the day ends, get rid of your anger. He says, now, don't let the sun go down on your wrath. That means get into a move from anger to a place of peace before the day ends. Don't let your anger sin and don't let your anger fester inside you. Get, a, get rid of it before the end of the day. And then he also says, don't give any place to the devil. As a believer, this is how we live. We say, devil, you have no place in me. So there, of course, the enemy will want to gain access into our mind, into our thinking, may want to get access into our emotions, our behavior, our deeds. But he says, do not give any place to the devil. The devil has no authority over you as a believer. He has no access to you except for the access that you choose to give him. And he gains access when we sin. He gains access when we believe his lies. He gains access when we believe his untruths and his deceiving thoughts and his wrong ideas. So he says, don't give any place to the devil. And then verses 28 and 29, he says, Let him who stole, steal no longer, but you work with your own hands what is good, that you can have something to give to others who are in need. Let no corrupt word come out of your mouth, but what is good for necessary edification, that it may impart grace to the hearers. So, this is the new man. This is the new life, the new way of living. If you don't steal, you learn to work with your own hands. So that you, whatever you earn, you can share with others, you can bless others with it. You don't speak corrupt words. Your language changes, your speech changes. And now you're looking at speaking words that can bless people, that can encourage people, and uh, that can build people up. Verse 30, and do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God by which you were sealed for the day of redemption. So remember in chapter 1, he told us that we are sealed by the Holy Spirit. We are sealed by God, by the Holy Spirit. Now he says, don't grieve the Holy Spirit. How do I grieve the Holy Spirit? Of course, when I do something that, do, that, does, does, that the Holy Spirit is not happy about, that's when I grieve Him. So I need to walk very sensitive to the spirit, presence of the Holy Spirit in my life. I need to make sure that I don't think, say, or do anything that would grieve Him and that would hurt Him in any way. So I walk conscious of the presence of the Holy Spirit in my life. That's this new life that we live. Then verses 31 and 32, he says, Let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, evil speaking, be put away from you with all hatred. Be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, 
even as God in Christ forgave you. So get rid of all these negatives. Bitterness, anger, speaking evil, hatred. He says, put away all these things. Let them get rid of them out of your life. And instead you walk as Christ walked, as, as, as just as God dealt with us. Be tenderhearted, be forgiving, even as God forgave you. And so he continues this in chapter 5. So we go on into chapter 5, verse 1. He says, be imitators of God as dear children and walk in love as Christ also loved us and has given himself for us uh, an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling savor. So he says, now, what is this new man? This new man is created in God's image. That's who you are on the inside. So now in the way you live, live like that. Be an imitator of God. Copy him. Do what he did. Just as he forgave us, and, uh, and, 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 and he gave his life as a sacrifice for us. That's what you also imitate. You love and you give your life for others. I like how the Amplified Bible puts uh, Ephesians 5, 1. It says, therefore, become imitators of God. Copy him and follow him, follow his example as well beloved children imitate their father. So basically saying you are God's child, now imitate your father. Do what your father would do. We pick up there in Ephesians 5, verse 3. He says, But fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not even be named among you as is fitting for saints. Neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor coarse jesting, which are not fitting, but rather giving of thanks. For this you know that no fornicator, unclean person, or covetous man, who is an idolater, has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God. Let no one deceive you with empty words, for because of these things, the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. Now he is getting further into the lifestyle of the believer. And he says, you know, don't, don't participate in sexual immorality, in any kind of uncleanness or any kind of filthiness, or even in, in, in coarse jesting or, you know, joking about bad things. He says, don't, don't even participate because this is not fitting for, uh, as, as behavior for saints, for God's people. He said, don't participate in those things. And he says, you know, because such kind of people have no part in the kingdom of God, is what he says in verse 5. And then in verse 6, he says, you know, don't let anyone deceive you with empty words. Don't let people come and tell you, okay, all of this is okay. It's okay to participate. He says, don't let anyone cheat you, fool you, deceive you by giving you empty words. Words are promises that actually don't hold any good. Because you know that actually God's wrath is on people who practice these things or live like that. So don't let anybody fool you. And so that's so important for us. And then he continues in verses 7 through 10. Therefore do not be partakers with them. For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness, righteousness, and truth, finding out what is acceptable to the Lord. So he says, listen, don't partake with others who are involved in these kinds of things, who are fornicators and immoral and who are involved in foolish talking and coarse jesting and in filthiness. He says, do not partake with them. Don't go with them because it is not fitting for those. You, you are children of light. You were in darkness, but God has brought you out of all that. So don't go back into that. You live as a child of light, walk as children of light. And instead, you let the fruit of the Spirit, the Holy Spirit dwells in you. What does He produce? He produces goodness, righteousness, and truth. So the Spirit of God leads you in this. The Spirit of God is, is re producing goodness, righteousness, and truth in life. And you walk in that. And how should we live? He says in verse 10, finding out what is acceptable to the Lord. Meaning, we pursue, say, God, what is acceptable to you? What is pleasing to you? That's how I want to live this life as a believer. So you find out, you ask God, God, is that right? Is that wrong? Is that pleasing to you? Is that not pleasing to you? You find out what is acceptable to the Lord, and then you live according to what is pleasing to God. And he continues on the same thought in verses 11 to 14. He says, and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather expose them. You don't go participate in it, but rather you expose them. You tell, talk about it the way it really is, that it is wrong. You call it wrong. You call a spade a spade. You say those things are wrong. Those things are, are things that a believer must not participate in. I will not participate. Verse 12, 
For it is shameful even to speak of those things which are done by them in secret. But all things that are exposed are made manifest by the light. For whatever makes manifest is light. So he says, you know, you don't even, it's shameful even to describe the kinds of things they, 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 they do. But because you are a child of light, what do you do? You expose them. Your presence reveals those things for what it is. You are there, you're, you're going to shine your light and expose that those kinds of deeds, those kinds of art activities are things you will not participate in because they are sin, because they're not acceptable to the Lord, because they are works of darkness, and you are a child of light. And then he says in verse 14, therefore he says, awake you who sleep, arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. So when you are there as a child of light, and because of your presence, you're exposing those deeds for what they really are, it is God speaking through you and giving them a message saying, you, you need to awake. You need to come out of darkness. You need, need to come out of that being dead and Christ will give you light. So really, as a child of God, when you stand amongst people who are doing those kinds of things and you refuse to partake with them, you choose to do what is pleasing to the Lord. You choose to walk in the spirit in what is good in, in goodness, righteousness, and truth. And you stand there amongst them, refusing to fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, God is releasing a message through you to all those people saying, you need to awake and you need to come out of the dead and Christ will give you light. Just by the fact that you stand amongst them, God will speak through your life to them. That's really powerful. Verses 15 through 17, Paul says, See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. So now, having understood the, what is happening, all the, the dynamic of darkness and light and the fact that you are a child of light, and then if you stand as a child of light, God will release a message through your life. Understanding all of this dynamic, he says, I want you to walk circumspectly. To walk circumspectly means to walk with due diligence. That means you're very careful about what you engage in, what you don't engage in. You're careful in what you do and you don't do. You're, you're thoughtful, you're circumspect about what the kinds of things you do. So walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. That means you're very wise. You're thinking about things. And that's only then you begin to participate in things. Verse 16, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. So he says, be careful of your time. Even how you spend your time. Redeem your time means to buy it back. Uh, take it away from things that would dissipate your time or waste your time. Redeem your time. Hold on to it very carefully. Buy it back. Don't let it get wasted because the days are evil, meaning because there are so many evil things that can consume your time. You're very watchful, careful to redeem your time. And then he says in verse 17, don't be unwise, don't be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. So in every step you take, you say, God, what is your will? What is acceptable to you? What is pleasing to you? What do you want me to do? And you walk that way. When you walk according to God's will, when you, God, when you walk pursuing God's will in every matter, you're being wise. And then we look at this last passage here in, in, in Ephesians 5, I'm read verses 18 through 21. He says, Do not be drunk with wine in which is dissipation, but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your hearts to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things to God the Father. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting to one another in the fear of God. So now he says, another aspect of living as a believer is this. Don't get drunk with wine. So indulging in alcohol, indulging in intoxicants, that's not part of our way of life. He says, don't get drunk with wine. But instead, you be filled with the Spirit. So he's drawing a comparison. So instead of being drunk with intoxicants, what you do is you get intoxicated, so to speak, or you get drunk with the Holy Spirit. You let the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, fill your being and begin to influence everything you say, do, and think. That's the life of the believer, one that is filled with the Spirit, that is under the influence and the leading and the moving of the Holy Spirit. So how do you know? that you're walking filled with the Spirit. He begins to describe the Spirit for life in verses 19 to 21. What will happen? When you're full of the Holy Spirit, songs will overflow. You'll begin to speak in psalms and hymns um, and spiritual songs. You'll, be, you'll have a heart of overflow worship and songs coming forth. 
And you will be making melody in your heart to the Lord. That's one sign that you're walking in the fullness of the Spirit. Secondly, you'll be thankful all the time. So first, you'll be praising God all the time. You'll be always making melody in your heart to the Lord. You're walking in that communion with God. Secondly, you're always thankful, giving thanks for everything to God in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Thirdly, you're walking in humility. You're walking in submission. You're walking in the spirit of meekness. He says in verse 21, submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. So these are three traits, three characteristics of somebody who's walking full of the Spirit. They are always worshiping, praising, thanking, making melody in their hearts to the Lord, thankful to the, and they're uh, celebrating God. Secondly, they're always thankful. And thirdly, they're always hum, uh, walking in humility, submitting themselves to one another in the fear of God. So that's the spiritual life. So Paul is saying, don't walk as the Gentiles walk. Walk as a new person. Walk in the Spirit and everything about you will change. It will be walking under the influence of the Holy Spirit. Hi there, we're just delighted to introduce to you our free church app. It's the All People's Church Bangalore app. The home screen has a five minute uh, daily devotional, five powerful minutes of teaching from the Word of God every day. Uh, You can watch the video or listen to the audio. We also have a daily Bible reading and prayer guide. We call it Journeying Together, where we give you a portion of scripture to read and uh, points to pray about. And we journey together through the Word of God, entire Bible, uh, once every two years. We also have a sermon key point, which is a five minute summary of the Sunday sermon. So in five minutes, you get the key highlights of the sermon. We also have life group study guides that you use to study in your life group based on the Sunday sermon. The main highlight of our church app is what we call the toolkit, which has eight powerful sections filled with the Word of God for you. We have a section called Gospel with tools to help you share the gospel with your friends. We give you videos. We have a section called Reasons, where we provide answers for commonly asked questions that you might encounter. When people ask you, how do you know that God exists? How do you know that God created everything? Why do you believe Jesus Christ is unique and so on? Questions that you need that you will face and there are answers there. We have a section called Faith Builders where we list scriptures on various areas of the Christian life to help build your faith and make your declaration and act on the Word of God. We have a section called Identity where we give you all the scriptures that you need to know to establish your personal identity of who you are in Christ. We firmly believe that who you are in Christ is who you really are. Uh, There's a section called On How To where we give you instructions or guidelines on how to do various aspects of ministry. How do you minister healing? How do you minister deliverance? How do you lead somebody into the baptism of the Holy Spirit and several other areas that you would encounter in ministry. We have a section called Group Study Guides where we give you several guides to be used in small groups to study the Word of God together on various topics and themes and this this will keep on growing. We have a section called Principles where we give you the Word of God to help you uh, make right choices and decisions as you encounter various scenarios in everyday life. And then we have a section called Lifestyle uh, where it tells you what the Bible says on various issues that you may face in life. And so this toolkit is something that's really important that you'll keep coming back using almost on a day-to-day basis. In addition to the toolkit, we of course have all our sermons available to you, the audio, the video, the sermon notes, and the series. We have our TV programs available on the app so that you can watch it anywhere, on demand, anytime. We have our worship videos so that you can listen to uplifting worship music from our worship band. We have all our books available so you can read the books on your mobile device. And of course, we have the ability to connect to our services live from wherever you are in the world. So make sure you head out to the app or Google Play stores, search for All People's Church Bangalore, download the app right away. Enjoy the journey. I'm sure it's going to be a great blessing to you. Before we close the program today, we'd just like to take some time to pray with you and uh, I really want to pray for those of you who've been watching and, and you feel in your heart there are areas of your life that you need to bring in submission to Christ. As we heard today through the Word of God, we cannot walk according to the former way of life, but every part of our being needs to come under the influence of the Holy Spirit. Have you made Jesus Lord of every part of your life? Or, but if you feel convicted after hearing the Word, saying, Lord, I need to bring areas of my life in submission to the Holy Spirit, and I, just want to, I want you to pray with me and surrender those areas. Let the Holy Spirit come in and fill those areas of your life. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for your word. And I pray especially, Lord, for those watching 
who are praying and saying, Lord, I want to surrender every area of my life to the influence, to the leading, to the Lordship of the Holy Spirit and to the Lord Jesus Christ. I pray right now that you will flood those areas of their lives. Let darkness be dispelled. Let every work of darkness be broken off of those areas, God. Lord, wherever the enemy has gained a foothold today, let them be set free and let the enemy be pushed out of those areas of their lives. And I pray the Holy Spirit will flood those areas of their being. And Lord, let Jesus be Lord in those areas and help each one of us walk in the Spirit even as we are taught in your Word. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much for being with us today. And until next time, remember, live life to Jesus' way. Admissions are now open at the ABC Bible College for the two-year full-time course in English starting July 2017. For more information, please visit abcwo.org slash Bible College. It's been our privilege to be able to bring God's Word to you through these telecasts on television. Uh, in addition to the uh, television programming, All People's Church uh, reaches out across our land through free publications where thousands of books are given out, especially to pastors and people in remote areas and towns where they do not have access uh, to Christian bookstores. Uh, we also hold uh, Christian leaders' conferences and youth conferences uh, for people who do not uh, have access to these uh, teachings. Uh, we also conduct short-term Bible colleges in different parts of the country, training and equipping uh, people for uh, ministry and work of God's kingdom. For all of these, of course, we need money, and uh, therefore we would like to just open up this invitation to you. If you would like to partner with us, either in our television programs, our publications, our conferences, our training and equipping of pastors and leaders, and also in church planting in areas across this land, feel free to do as the Lord leads and to contribute financially towards the work that all people's church is doing across India.